So I'm here with um, Josh Blaylock of um, Devil's Do Entertainment, uh, who's recently uh, come together with First Look Comics, uh, both out of Chicago. Yep, just uh, just First Comics. First Comics, yeah. Right. So now we formed this umbrella company um, to combine our infrastructures. So we're literally Devil's Do First Comics <laughs> LLC. I love it. And, well, we didn't. You know, we really thought about like a new name or even calling it like Devil's First or something completely different. Yeah. And the retailers, you know, really know that Devil's Do brand is back on the rise, and then First Comics has been gone and it used to be a huge name so it's just we wanted them to no confusion it's in the catalog <laughs> boom there it is yeah and it's worked like this yeah. the retailer summit we did before Baltimore Comic Con was like great yeah we're giving away uh, tons of these preview books um, if anybody watching this goes through our website any retail stores want to get a hold of these we can send them some if we have any left um, very cool and you're also the writer on Mercy Sparks correct yeah, that's my baby. Um, so uh, I was I was talking to um, some people at the booth here yesterday, getting the the um, genesis of the story, and it sounds really really cool. But I like to hear from you. You know, how would you describe you know the the story? Thanks. There's Liz Mercy right here in her double form. Uh, she's a so she's a twist on the classic like kind of almost intentionally generic double chick character. She's a devil girl that is put on earth by heaven to work for them, and she has to hunt down rogue angels. So there's uh, she's disguised as a human. So you know she walks around like this like punk rock looking blonde chick uh, most of the time until she reveals her true form. She has to like rip the halos from the energy bond of, the, of their heads to like knock them out. And that's how it starts. She's got this roommate, Hank, who like is this like genius death metal dude that never really uh, well, didn't apply himself, but he's a genius and he makes all these gadgets for her to help her fight angels. And it's just a lot of fun. She really doesn't want to do the job, so she just tends to spend most of her time thinking and trying not to work. And now though, we're, we're through the first miniseries, we're on issue 9 of the ongoing series, and it's opened up to uh, all the <laughs> All the really bigger stuff in the background is coming to fruition now. Most recently, her parents finally appear, and her mom is coming to screw everything up. <laughs> so, uh, so what what kind of uh, what what kind of leverage do they have over her to make her uh, do this this job? Well, it starts out. She's at, so the quick pitch is you know just double check blah blah blah. She's right. not really a demon. Right. She's not from heaven or hell or purgatory. She's okay. from Shield, which is an Old Testament. Right. Exactly. Almost like Hades or something. Right. Right. So in my world, in my universe, that's just like a, another another world, kind of like ours, but with where you go if you fall through the cracks of the divine systems, you don't fit anywhere. Okay. It just exists parallel to us, and so she's just kind of like the equivalent of a normal person there, even though she's this devil, a deviling, and. She's at a bar one day, and the uh, bar clears out, and this demon, Mr. Soup, walks in, and he just tells her, I have a message from heaven, you're going to go live on Earth and work for them. And she's like, who that for you? You know, I don't, I don't know, Earth, Earth's like not even real, what he's talking about. And he just pimp smacks her, knocks her out, and she wakes up on Earth as a blonde human, and we cut to a year later, and she's been hunting these angels. So. The first story arc is of Heaven's dirty work, and then, not to give too much away, she realizes things aren't exactly as they seem, and she's, uh, really, Heaven has, uh, I, I like to play with the idea of Heaven helping these big bureaucracies, and there's spies on either side, and the left hand might not know what the right hand is doing, and so, she, uh, the, the second arc is called Under New Management, and she reports to somebody else, and, uh, and then, basically learns that like she wasn't really ever supposed to be there but now that she is they kind of do like that idea and pretty much that's been it and now uh, just as things might start to calm down it turns out her mother's been pulling a lot of strings and been in prison and hell for who knows how long and is about to come back and I'm, I'm really I'm happy with the way their parents came out because like it's not like anybody would expect I really tried to make it like this is not what you I'm sure her parents are not going to be what you think they are <laughs> well what I, what I like about that story is you know the it, it makes perfect sense that, that some you know something that's been around 
forever, heaven or hell, would become this bureaucracy, would just become this like nightmare of, you know, someone telling someone, telling someone, telling someone to go do something and and you could even see it, you know, as an explanation for why things, you know, don't always end up the right way and stuff like that. I, I think I think that ends up creating this great world that's I like to play this idea that it's it's kind of like it's infinite. Yeah. Like you go so no matter how high up the chain you go, there's always something more powerful, and like that's what God is. Like these angels, they're like middle management. They're way more powerful than we are, and they know what is. Um, so like, you know, they they know way more than we do right. about the universe and everything. Right. But if they don't know something, they're not going to tell us. Right. And I like to. And, and Mercy Sparks in, in the comics, the higher up you get with power, and a lot of the whether it's a entity from heaven or hell, the weirder they get, the weirder looking they get. And if you see something that's extremely powerful from heaven, you'd be just as terrified as if you saw some terrifying demon. Yeah. Because uh, you know, just in a different way. Yeah. Well. You're definitely doing some deep cuts. You've got Sheol in there. I mean, if anyone actually like takes the time to read the Bible, the descriptions of angels are absolutely terrifying. They're nightmare oh, fuel. We, we love to play with that. They are nightmare yeah. fuel. So I love that you're really digging deep into that to create this this universe, and and it leads to some really neat ideas. I, I love pulling out those like just crazy, just really bizarre descriptions of animals and creatures that the people see in visions, like in Revelations and in the New Testament. And, uh, you know. A lamb, a lamb with like eight faces on it, and then a man's head on top, and then wings, and I have just you know crazy <laughs> yeah. stuff. And uh, you know, we definitely have some characters uh, like that. So um, within within the uh, Devil's, Devil's Do, uh, what used to be Devil's Do on its own, uh, what other books do you recommend for people that that uh, like the idea of the stuff you're going for? It all seems to have a, a very um, similar, uh, and not in a bad way, but like a similar aesthetic to it. So if they like Marcy Sparks, they'll, pro Marcy Sparks, they'll probably like some of these other things. Yeah, it's it's I, one thing I'm, I'm kind of proud of. Like we can't, we have a brand feel. Yeah. But you can't really describe it. Like, yeah. Uh, hopefully it just it's just kind of got a DIY vibe, you know. But um, there's really no book like the others, so it's we don't really have a, a lot of people that come by all of our stuff. Okay. You know? It's um, Mercy's so drastically different than uh, you know, my, the books that I personally write. Yeah. Operation Nemesis, based on a true story, uh, centers around uh, the assassination of the leader of Turkey after the Armenian oh. genocide. Uh -huh. uh, there's uh, March Curse of the Merch Girl, which is like Scott Pilgrim meets Labyrinth. Yeah. Um, and then we did that in conjunction with the rapper Murs, and there's an album that goes with it. Um, the, I did a book on how to self-publish comics. That's just a straight-up book. Right. Uh, Scorriers is a really big breakout hit for us uh, by Ashley Witter and Ash Masco. Um, Secret of Nim meets Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. It's just fantastic artwork. Uh, all the prints sell out. The, the issues sell out. We're yeah. going to the trade paperback now. Yeah. And um, so, uh, Tales of Mr. Reed, which I showed you before, is the horror series. Yeah. Uh, Scorch. It's kind of like, you know, Invader Zim type right. of a vibe. Uh, Plume is a western with a magical twist. A ton of other stuff. Sure. First Comics has just as much, even more stuff in the pipeline. Right. right. The two two notable books really, like, right now, that are either out or almost out, is Public Relations. It's like uh, the Arrested Development TV show meets Princess Bride or Game of Thrones. Oh, man. I gotta check that out. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Annie Wu from Black Canary is doing the covers. Okay. Um, the Fables crew, uh, Matt Sturgis and Dave Justice are writing it. It's really funny and it's really like kind of raunchy. Um, the uh, RRH is another book they have, like an action uh, modernized descendant of Red Riding Hood. And okay. Red Riding Hood's story turns out is actually all about fighting werewolves. Oh, okay. And, Sounds good. Yeah, and um, then we have. They have a book coming out like The Leap, and Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray, and Andy Connors doing covers. I've heard of that one, yeah. A ton of graphic novels from uh, amazing storytellers, the Philbach brothers. So, I could rattle it on and on sure. and on and on, but it's, sure. you know, well, go to devilsdo.net or devilsdo-first.com, and that'll take you to both places, and check everything out there. Where Devil's Do stuff's all available in Comixology, too. Nice. Very good. And uh, is the Devil's Do stuff, is it available for, for uh, download uh, to your computer as well? Uh, the DRM free or uh, not yet? Uh, 
I, we're supposed to be. Okay, yeah. perfect. And just one more question. The one, the one that's about Turkey, um, that that intrigues me as a as a history geek. Um, how, how, um, how much do you deviate from from your historic starting point? I literally like I read the court case uh, in, in Germany. Um, the because then Salah Pasha, the leader of Turkey, was killed in Berlin, uh, and then. Sogoman Tlerian was the assassin who was this like a college staff, student who took him out who was a survivor and never denied he killed the guy in court. It was a huge like sensationalized worldwide like worldwide coverage of this court trial back then. 1921. He never denied he killed him and he was declared innocent. Because all the stories came out about what was happening and they just they just didn't want to declare him guilty and it turns out it was actually a very like sophisticated orchestrated secret mission kind of like uh inglorious bastards but okay. it actually happened so it sounds perfect for yeah. for a comic or, or a movie treatment so best reviewed thing i've ever done like oh, it, awesome. it, yeah like by far it's uh, got great reviews it's it's not the it's not an escapist thing it's the opposite <laughs> cool. and um really intense but i'm, I'm proud of it and I'd like to get it out there. Cool. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I don't even know if I said the title while that was Operation Demo.